Recently, an article appeared in the paper about Key Stage 1 test results. In it, Level 2 was referred to as the expected level for 7-year-olds. And yes, the article bemoaned the fact that 25% were, quote, unable to master basic writing skills, unquote. Now, first of all, I want to know about who expects these levels and why. When national curriculum levels were first introduced, Level 2 was that expected of the average 7-year-old, not that expected of all. Ah, I've got it. In the 1980s, the then Secretary of State for Education, Sir Keith Joseph, stated that the government's intention was to get everybody to the level of the average. So this is part of a national quest for uniform mediocrity. This quest has, I believe, characterised education in the time covered by our careers. I first identified the phenomenon of uniform mediocrity as I worked in the late 1960s in a new comprehensive school. There we were entreated to throw away all that was best in grammar and secondary modern school education and to strive for what I saw as an amorphous nothingness. Since then the national curriculum has, of course, got rid of the poor curriculum models previously seen in a few schools but has stifled creativity in curriculum design and hence in students' learning experiences. National assessment programmes have taken away from teachers the freedom to teach in innovative ways and have reduced many classrooms to learning how to take tests and examinations rather than learn mathematics. In addition, the national strategies have driven the move to greater uniformity of uninspiring methodology. Then Ofsted came along. Whilst it certainly helped to reduce the number of poor schools and weak teachers, it underpinned a fear in teachers that further inhibited the most lively and dynamic teaching and learning. So, after 40 years, I believe we have almost reached the uniform mediocrity I foresaw back then. How sad!